Hi, everybody, and welcome again today to another WinPeers Weekly Webinar. Again, my name is uh, Ben Cutler. I'm one of our solution specialists here at WinPeer. Really appreciate everyone joining the call today. It looks like we've got a really great turnout again this week. You know, we've been doing these webinars for the past few weeks now, and uh, we've had really such a great response. So again, really just want to thank everyone for, for your interest and for your time. Um, also want to uh, really just throw the invitation out there. If you, if you have any comments, questions uh, about these webinars, or if you have any suggestions uh, for topics for future webinars, um, please respond to one of those emails and, um, you know, feel free to get in touch. I'd, I'd be glad to hear from you. Really hope this is, uh, this is really uh, useful information. A uh, quick introduction here for those that are new to the call. Again, we're, we're hosting these webinars each week um, uh, really to cover very specific topics, generally geared towards uh, some basic product training uh, or product introduction. Uh, in weeks to come, keep an eye out. We are going to be start, uh, start to, starting to look at some very specific topics. Uh, you might even say hot topics. Things like systems implementation, systems migrations, um, you know, master data management, things like that. Inviting guest speakers uh, and uh, doing some, you know, some some very brief interviews uh, about, uh, you know, their experience working on these initiatives and their experience working with tools like ours uh, to help them with these initiatives. So, uh, again, please stay tuned. We're doing this each week uh, with little exception. Um, join us when you can or keep your eyes out for the recordings if you can't join us live. Uh, this week we're looking at uh, clean and match projects, right? So we get we get uh, quite a few questions around, uh, you know, how it works, right? Especially when, when people contact us for the first time. How do you clean data? How does that work? Um, well, you know, honestly, it's it, it's a longer conversation. It, it really kind of depends on uh, your goals, on, on your requirements. Every scenario is going to be unique. You know, there isn't one way to clean data. So today we're going to look at uh, creating and working with projects, some of the different ways that you can work with projects, uh, when projects might be uh, useful to you, um, and, uh, you know, some of the different scenarios that we've seen for data operations and data cleansing. Um, so let, let's go ahead and uh, jump into it here. Just uh, a bit of context about the, uh, the demonstration today. So starting with the basics, what is a clean and match project? Well, a clean and match project is essentially a data cleansing template or workflow, right? So a few different components there. Uh, if you look on your screen, uh, components include the data sources, right? One or more data sources, uh, clean settings, uh, you know, essentially data cleansing and standardization settings according to your specific needs. Uh, the match configurations, essentially match configurations that you found to work well with that type of data. And if you've run the project, uh, you also see some match results as, as part of that project as well. Keep in mind for match results, we have, uh, we can certainly export all data uh, as we often do, but you can also work with the data and kind of prep the data before doing the export. So we've got different ways to kind of filter and sort the data. Um, you can type in and add some things. So, so th th there are going to be a few different options here, and we're going to look at that towards the uh, the latter part of the demonstration here. Um, so that being said, um, let's look at some of the different use cases for clean and match projects. Um, let's keep in mind here that again, data operations are always unique. Uh, you know, I have uh, dozens of conversations daily um, with you know people working with different data sets, with you know different data flows and things like that. So those requirements are are always going to be unique. Uh, there are different types of data, different business needs, different use cases. Um, keep in mind, you're not required to create projects but there are a variety of different scenarios where it could be useful to do so. And we're gonna talk about uh, some of those use cases now. So clean and match projects could be useful anytime you want to uh, be able to uh, come back and, and view your work historically, right? Uh, be it a day later, weeks later, months later, if you wanna be able to come back and view uh, you know, the, the work that you did historically, 
um, a project would make good sense for you. Um, others might want to come back, you know, a week later and refresh the data sources and modify modify the workflow and, and rerun that workflow, right? So, uh, you know, uh, many different scenarios there. Also, if you if you have any need to to back up your work uh, or if you have any kind of uh, auditing uh, requirements in terms of the data cleansing that's being done, a, a project is a good way to do that. Um, a few other scenarios here include sharing uh, projects, cloning projects, and uh, and again rerunning the uh, the workflow. I want to talk about sharing for a minute here because you know we we see you know uh, an increasing need for shared projects, and it's actually quite simple to do, right? So it, as long as everyone has access to the to the software, the clean and match software and access to the same projects and to the same data, multiple users can easily share projects back and forth, right? So that, that's, that's, that's something worth noting here. You might wanna share projects to allow users to check their work. Um, you might also wanna share uh, projects so that users can get a head start on their work, essentially using pr uh, projects as templates. Uh, if you have any kind of data cleansing approval processes in place, you might have, for example, a database administrator creating projects and saving them in a shared folder uh, for later approval by an admin of sorts. Right, so a variety of different scenarios where uh, projects could be really useful to you as an organization. Those are a few. If you have any questions uh, about how you might be able to use a project, feel free to reach out. Let's, again, keeping in mind that all data operations are different and you know how you're gonna do this kind of work and whether or not a project is gonna be useful for you, that's gonna vary from scenario to scenario. Let's look at a few uh, real life uh, scenarios here. So this first scenario is essentially one-to-one, -one, importing data from a single source and pushing some or all of that data to a single source, either as new data or potentially to update existing data, right? So again, a, a lot of different unknowns when we're talking about your requirements and, uh, and your approach, right? Um, the second approach here is a many to one essentially, and this is very common, where you're importing data uh, from multiple sources and pushing some or all of that data to a single source, either again as new data or potentially to update uh, existing data. This third scenario here is uh, importing data from multiple sources and pushing some or all of that data back to those original sources, uh, typically to update uh, the existing data, right? So a lot of different possibilities here when we're talking about data flows and data operations and business requirements. This, uh, this next uh, scenario here is, is essentially importing data from multiple different systems and pushing to multiple different systems, uh, be it the same source systems or even perhaps uh, new systems. So essentially, uh, you know, importing uh, data from multiple systems, cleaning, uh, standardizing, linking, joining, merging data from multiple sources uh, to send to you know, some of those same uh, source systems and perhaps even some uh, new sources there. When it comes to cleansing data, um, again, there are a variety, cleansing, linking, matching, and deduplicating uh, data. Again, there are a variety of different use cases, requirements, and a variety of different approaches. So on this final slide here, uh, we've, uh, essentially we're, we're showing a, a three of the most common approaches uh, to doing this kind of work. And if you see at the bottom of the slide here, the first approach is the data warehouse or the analytical approach. And I'll come back and explain that in a second. The second approach is source systems operational approach. And the third is link and show everything through a custom app approach. So what this means, if we look at the analytical uh, approach here, it's a very, very common approach essentially importing, uh, cleaning, standardizing, linking, merging, uh, merging data from multiple disparate systems and then sending to a new target system, a data warehouse or, or something different 
Uh, and that's typically done for analytical or other purposes um, and, and usually done um, with, you know, with the intention to eventually distribute that data to new and existing systems, potentially updating the existing data. But the, the benefits to this approach are that it can be done very, very quickly. Right, essentially importing from multiple disparate systems. If you look at the organization, you've got all kinds of business app applications, all kinds of disparate data lakes and, and uh, you know data warehouses and things like that. And being able to link and join and merge that data, work with a single source of truth, can be very beneficial for a variety of different reasons. So the you know the the most practical, the the fastest approach uh, that really requires the least amount of time and investment is really that analytical approach where you're pulling in data from multiple different sources and pushing to a, uh, a new source. That second approach, the operational approach, essentially pushing that clean data back to source systems, uh, it typically does require more time and more investment. You know, again, thinking about all of the different systems that you work with, uh, each one being very different, very unique, with different requirements and different out-of-the-box functionality, um, there, there's a lot more to uh, to take into consideration here. So really requires a lot more planning um, when, when you want to take that clean data and update the uh, the source systems there. The third approach, again, this is this is very similar to that uh, to that first approach, but uh, it is certainly different in a variety of ways. But that third approach, linking and showing everything through a custom app, um, you know, th this is a popular approach as well, and it, it essentially allows your business users a new front end. So essentially, uh, importing. Uh, cleaning, standardizing, linking, matching, merging data from a variety of different systems and displaying that uh, data uh, to your business users through some sort of a new custom app. Uh, this is uh, often popular because it doesn't typically require a ton of time or investment, uh, but does make that data very, very useful to business users uh, very, very quickly. So let's go ahead and switch gears here. Let's jump into the demonstration, uh, creating and working with projects start to finish. And, um, you know, again, the, the, more, the more of a power user you become with the software and the more familiar that you become with uh, what it takes to clean and to match and merge uh, any specific set of data, the quicker you can really work through this. So we've scheduled about a half an hour today uh, and we're, we're not going to run over that. We're about, uh, it looks like eight, eight and a half, nine minutes into this, and I've got a good uh, six, maybe eight minutes to work through an entire project. So let's go ahead and change, uh, you know, switch gears here. Let's, uh, let's move over to the software and let's take a look at how, how, how easy this really is. Um, let's take a quick look. All right, great. So everybody's seeing the uh, the software here. What we're looking at is WinPeer's Clean and Match Enterprise uh, and Address Verification Edition. So if you look in the lower left here, you have your primary workflow, data, clean, match, verify, automation. Uh, in the uh, over here on the right here, you can see recent projects that have been created. And today we're just going to go ahead and create a project from scratch, import some data, do some quick profiling, cleansing. We're going to deduplicate accounts and we're gonna preserve all unique contacts, right? So we're gonna do some, uh, some, some very powerful work very quickly in just a few minutes here. I'm gonna start by creating a project, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a name, new project webinar, uh, let's just say one. If you look to the right here, you can choose where you want to save this project. So if I pull this up here and just go over to webinars, I'm going to save it locally, but again, you can share these projects. So if you want to share, if you want to uh, save the project on a shared folder somewhere, feel free to do that. Again, uh, those people just need access to the software, access to the project, and access to the same set of data. Um, so we've given it a name. We're going to go ahead and save, create. The project has been created. We're going to go ahead and import some data. Keep in mind, we can mix and match and import data from different file types, databases. CRMs, right? So feel free to pull in data from wherever you need to. Again, makes it very quickly to work with that, you know, that analytical uh, type of uh, data or link and show everything through a custom map, right? Very quick approaches to uh, importing data from multiple different sources all across the, uh, the business and to make it very actionable very quickly. 
Uh, for today, I'm just going to import from a couple of different Excel uh, sheets here. Again, very quick, very simple to do. Again, keep in mind that you know, for, for folks just looking at the software for the first time here, new users, uh, you know, you're not required to have any special skills to, uh, to be able to do data cleanup. Um, it doesn't require much training, typically an hour or two of training and then, you know, some ongoing practice with the software and, and you'll start to feel like a power user pretty quickly. Um, so we've uploaded or we've imported some data. We have our master uh, data and our weekly data. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move over to clean. And at the clean step here, you know, I would typically start by doing some, uh, some profiling. So again, if you're new to the data, you're probably gonna spend a bit more time uh, uh, on this. You're probably gonna want to, you know, spend a bit of time really understanding uh, the content and the structure of your data sets, right? To better understand the data quality, to better understand what kind of cleansing and standardization might be needed uh, to get the best output. Right. In my case, you know, again, I can I can look here. I have my two tables. Um, I can see uh, the data the uh, the data quality metadata over here to the right. I can go column by column. I can focus on columns of special interest. So, for example, if title is special interest, I can go through and I can look specifically at title. But otherwise, all of the data is here. Anywhere I see red, just tells me that it's you know it's higher probability that I do have a potential data quality issue there. I know right off the bat that trailing spaces, leading spaces, multiple spaces, non-printable characters, those things are always, you know, almost always problematic. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do some light cleaning here. I'm just gonna apply, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove trailing spaces, use the check all to apply to all columns, remove leading spaces, check all to apply to all columns, do a few other things here just to clean this up pretty quickly. Um, I'm pretty much done with the removal. I'm gonna skip convert. I am gonna do some standardization. I'm gonna put everything in uppercase here. For split, I'm gonna split contact names. So what we currently have is just a full name, right? I'm gonna go ahead and split that very quickly and easily. Uh, I'm also gonna, I'm gonna work with our word manager here um, for titles. Um, my use case in this particular scenario is I wanna know um, all titles that are at director level or above and all titles that are at manager level or below. And in you know, working with real life data, I've got uh, a ton of different you know, possibilities here. So a lot of am ambiguous data, uh, so to speak. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sort this. I can see the more popular values down below. In this case, owner shows up 38 times and I can make a single change to make 38 changes, right? I can write a single rule to make uh, 38 uh, director, to make 38 changes there. Again, in a real life scenario, you're probably gonna make thousands, tens of thousands, or even hundreds of thousands of changes very, very quickly, right? This is de designed to allow you to work with this data and make very broad uh, strokes, uh, broad stroke changes, right, in bulk. I'm gonna go ahead and bring all values over here and I'm gonna write a quick, a few uh, quick rules here. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a copy and paste. So again, mostly everything is point and click, copy and paste, click and drag. Um, so it makes it very, very uh, simple to make big broad stroke changes. I'm gonna go ahead and just set all of these either at the director level or above or at the manager level or below. So I'm just making some executive uh, calls here in terms of what this should look like. And I can, uh, I can finish with this actually very, very quickly. And so it all kind of depends on your use case. So I filled that out. I'm gonna make a ton of changes very quickly. I'm gonna save this so I can later reuse the Word Manager file as a template. Uh, so I'm gonna save that locally here. I'm just gonna call this uh, Word Manager uh, Titles. And then again, if you want to save it locally, you can later reuse that with uh, new data sets. If you want to save it on a shared folder, you can allow other users to, to use that. I'm going to go ahead and save this and run clean. That's going to apply all of these changes to the data set here. If I look up top and look at all options, I can see everything that's been done. Right, uppercasing, splitting uh, the, the contact name here. Uh, and I applied that word manager file. And you know, again, on my master data here on this other table, we're starting with a clean slate, 
right? But what I can do here is I can quickly and easily set this up and just save this as a matrix or a template of cleansing settings. So it's already got a name, I'll take that weekly matrix. I'm gonna save it here. And now when I start working with this new data, this master data here that, that really has a, a clean slate, I can just go ahead and load that matrix, right? So weekly matrix, everything is filled in for me, right? So some of these columns didn't exist on the weekly table, like the 360 view status. So there aren't any cleansing settings done there, but for any columns that did exist on that other table, everything has been filled out for me. So it's very, very quick and very simple, very, very powerful to work with these templates. Again, the project itself is essentially a template, right? A, a data cleansing template or workflow. So I'm, I'm pretty much done at this point. I may wanna go in and just add my, uh, my word manager here. So I'm gonna go ahead and save or, or load rather the word manager titles and I'm going to save that and I'm gonna run the clean, right? You can see the information down below has been updated. Um, we don't have any red in the trailing spaces, leading spaces. So this information has been updated. I know that I'm working with a clean set of data now and I'm ready to move on to match. So I'm gonna move on to match. And again, looking up top, we're gonna to start at our configuration. Then we're gonna to move to results. You do have some reporting available for you that is customizable. We're gonna go step one, step two, and step three, very quickly and easily. Um, we're gonna choose the sources that we're gonna use for matching. Again, I'm gonna deduplicate on the account level. So for this, uh, for this demonstration, I'm just gonna do some fuzzy matching on the, on the company name field. I'm gonna make a couple of quick changes here. I'm gonna increase the fuzzy level to 95, so we're not seeing too many false positives. I'm gonna ignore null values, and I'm gonna set it up to work with our knowledge base library for company types, right? So essentially what that's gonna do is it's gonna remove noise for me and increase uh, the accuracy of, of my uh, match results here. So very quickly and easily, I can set up a match definition here. Keep that in mind, the more you work with the software, the more familiar you become with any particular data set, what it takes to, uh, to clean it and to deduplicate that data set, um, the quicker you're gonna be able to work through a project here. Now, with more variety, you know, again, more thought is gonna go into setting up those projects. So, um, you know, again, we have a variety of different ways to work with templates and work throughs, workflows to help you automate uh, some of this. So. Um, that's what we're looking at today. And again, feel free to reach out if you have any questions about how to make that work for you. We're gonna go ahead and start the matching here. And again, I've got little time left here, so I'm already running over time here. Um, so we're gonna do some quick examples in terms of how to prep that output. Um, you know, for the first time around, if, if this is your first time working with the data, you're probably gonna wanna do some validation. Um, here you can validate the, the column that you've used to do some matching has been highlighted. You have some scores. If you take a look at the results, you might find some ways to um, kind of, you know, tweak your settings at the clean step and the match step to get better results. Um, in this case, I like what I see. So, you know, I've done this a few times. I'm ready to go ahead and take the next steps here. I'm gonna start with selecting master records. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna set up some rules that are gonna assign master records to each group um, based on some kind of logic. Now in this scenario, again, I've been working with this data for a while. So if you take a look here, I have a customer status flag and a 360 view status flag. So on this customer status, I'm working with subscribers, leads, or new information that's blank, um, also customers. On 360 view status, I'm essentially looking at uh, or working with your parents and ch uh, children, or again, blanks because it's new information. So essentially, I'm gonna set the priority on anything that's marked as a parent and anything that's marked as a customer. So very quickly and easily, I can use those flags to uh, select master records or to assign master records. So I'm gonna say meet all. I'm gonna scroll down and go find uh, the fields I wanna work with. I'm gonna use the contains operator and I'm gonna say customer. And for the next one here, I'm gonna use the 360 view and again, contains and I'm gonna say parent, right? Oh, yeah, parent, okay, looks good. Then down below, I'm gonna say the most relevant and I'm gonna execute and very quickly and easily, I have my master records assigned based on those priorities. So group one is the first record, group two is the second record. If we wanna do some quick validation, I can scroll over. And uh, again, group one, the first record is parent, group two, the second record is customer. So that worked and I'm happy.
right? I have now assigned master records. The second scenario here before I export is I want to deduplicate so I have a single source of truth, right? I don't want to see all three records in each group. I want to see just a single record in each group. But I do want to preserve any and all unique contacts, right? People that are associated with these accounts. And, you know, in your scenarios, it might be email addresses, phone numbers, and things like that. Any and all unique information, you might want to preserve that. So to do that, I'm going to use the merge function. I'm going to do this very quickly and easily. I'm just going to set this up to uh, keep all values on the contact name. And I did say titles, right? I did say titles. So I'm going to go ahead and preserve all titles as well, all unique titles. I'm going to merge that. The data has been deduplicated. It is ready to go. I can uh, keep or I can hide my, uh, my system columns here. I'm going to go ahead and hide those. All right, if I want to pull back in, you know, just one of those system columns. So, for example, maybe the, uh, the group ID, for example, I can pull in just that one column. So we can make some additional changes here. Again, right click on the column header. We can sort, filter, conditional filtering, uh, conditional formatting, things like that. And then I'm ready to go. Right, I'm happy, I'm ready to export, so I can send to files, databases, export with style, or move back to data, which will send it to the first step so I can continue working with that data. So we've already run over time, but I think we've done pretty well from start to finish with the project here. Keep in mind, now that we've created a project and we've saved this project, again, we can share that. We can, if we have the enterprise edition, enterprise desktop or server, we can also set that up on the, uh, on the automation to schedule that. Uh, and have that work uh, automated for us. So feel free to reach out with any questions in terms of how you might work with projects. I'm gonna open it up to questions now. We've run over time. I might not be able to get to everything, but I'll do my best here within the time that we've scheduled. Um, so I'm gonna open it up to questions and see what kind of questions we have coming in here. Great. Um, first question, do all versions of the software have the automation? Um, good question. So to view and compare versions of the software, and yes, we do have a few, um, go to winpeer.com, click on products and um, compare uh, versions. That way you can kind of compare the different versions that we have available. But the quick answer to your question is that it's going to be enterprise desktop or enterprise server uh, that will include that, uh, that automation unit there or that automation module. So good question. Uh, again, I'll, I'll try to get through these pretty quickly here. Next question, can we add new sources to existing projects? Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's jump back to data just so we have a visual. So in this case, we've created a project, new project webinar one. We've created this and we might come back to it tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. And we might want to do things a little bit differently, right? We might want to remove sources. We might want to add new sources. Um, we might want to change some of the rules about how we're cleansing the data and standardizing the data. We might want to go back to the word manager and add some new rules, for example, or even remove the word manager file that we have and create a new one, uh, for example. So again, creating that project and saving that project allows you to, to kind of view it historically and also allows you to go back and make some changes, some modifications to rerun that uh, project and a variety of other um, scenarios. So yeah, absolutely. Um, feel free to, uh, to add uh, new sources there. Something to keep in mind just on that question, uh, your clean, your cleansing settings, your standardization settings and the match settings are tied to your specific sources, right? Now something like a clean matrix is a standalone solution. So you can use that from source to source. But when we're talking about in the context of a project, well, you know, I've set up this project, I've done some matching, so everything is here for me. If I come back to this in a week and I want to see the match definition, if I want to see the results, I can do that. But if I go back and I make some changes to the sources, again, I may need to add a new clean matrix, right, for the cleansing settings, uh, and I'm probably going to need to, uh, to set up that match definition again. So something to keep in mind. Great question there. Uh, next question here, are there any project limitations? Uh, like max number of projects or max files per project? Um, great question. So um, kind of a two-part question here. Uh, max number of projects. No, there, there, there isn't any limitation in terms of the max number of projects. Um, and 
you know, if you ask around, I'm sure you're going to find some additional data cleansing, data prep, data matching type of use cases within the organization. Um, so there aren't any limits. So you can, you know, feel free to create as many projects uh, as you need to, as many uh, clean matrices as you need to, and as many word manager files as you need to, uh, to be able to clean and, and you know, match and, and uh, standardize data. Um, in terms of the max number of files per project, yes, there are some limitations there, um, depending on the version. So again, uh, if you go to winpeer.com products and compare versions, you're going to see, you know, you're going to be able to compare those different versions and, um, you know, the features, uh, you know, available in each version. The small business versions do have some limitations in terms of the number of records, uh, you know, per project and the number of files or sources or, or tables per project. The enterprise edition, enterprise desktop and enterprise server, uh, don't have any limitations, any imposed limitations at all. So you might work with 10, 15, you know, or dozens of, of different file sources on a single project. The most important consideration then is just that the software is sitting uh, on the type of, um, you know, processing PC that can handle the, those types of data operations. Um, so be it a, you know, a desktop or a server, just making sure that you have the processing power to handle that, that type of uh, project. So great question there. I think, yep, we've got time for one more question here if I make it quick. Um, if I set up a clean matrix and a project for customer data, can I use the same project and clean matrix for supplier data? Um, yeah, absolutely. So again, you, you know, you might want to look at, um, you know, um, you know, if it makes sense to do that. Uh, and if it does, yeah, absolutely. Again, um, for the project, you can absolutely, you know, change out the uh, the sources there. Keep in mind, you know, your cleansing setting, your matching settings are going to be tied to those sources. Um, and when we talk about clean matrix, those templates, uh, again, you can use that from source to source. So if it makes sense, yeah, absolutely. And you can build upon what's there. Um, in fact, if you want to apply, you know, three different clean matrices to the same uh, data source, feel free to do that. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, quite a bit of flexibility that way. So we're wrapping up here. Um, I think we had just another question come in here and I'm not, um, yeah, we, we don't have the, the time to get to that, but if you shoot me an email, I would, uh, I would be happy to answer any additional questions that might come in. We're running out of time here, so we're gonna keep it brief and, and let everybody get back to their day uh, as scheduled. So um, thank you again, everyone for joining. Really appreciate your support, your interest. Um, again, if you have any questions, uh, suggestions, feedback, um, please respond back to me. Um, if you have any suggestions about future topics, um, you know, I, I'd love to hear that feedback. So thanks again for joining today. Uh, really hope this was useful and uh, have a great rest of your day. Take good care.